<laughs> well, after lots and lots of um, questions over time, we thought it was about time to sit down and actually answer a lot of the social media questions that we get on Google. How many do you get personally? Well, on Facebook and yeah. Twitter, loads. Loads. People don't really know much about it, do they? There's, there's a lot of them, there's a bit of confusion. Let's set the record straight. What about you? Exactly the same, quite a few questions. I'm gonna echo what you said, people don't really understand it. And would you say the questions have generally a similar trend? Yes. Uh, yes. Excellent. Does it really matter what pop-ups you use to soak in goo? Does it change the pop-up altogether? Yes, it does. Um, I use the uh, pink and white mainline pop-ups and it does, if you put a lot of liquid on something, it's going to change the buoyancy in it. That's just what happens. So if you're having an issue with that, put a little tiny bit of cork in the top and that'll make sure that it pops up over a period of time. And yes, it will change the flavour of the pop-up as well because it's very overpowering, um, but that's what makes it successful. Exactly, yeah. Um, really important point because a lot of people overlook the fact that you do have, you know, the cork plugs and it does actually make something that is teetering on the brink to suddenly staying up um, all night long, basically. Good old Lionel, what a guy. What a guy. <laughs> he told me, <laughs> put a cork plug in it and it's all good. And actually, uh, we did a, mar you, do you remember the In Pursuit of the Monster Masterclass? Uh, and I used the chod rigs at Gigantica yeah. and I had that very problem. I'd been soaking and curing um, some white uh, mainline pop-ups for ages in different combinations of goo. And really, I put them on the chod rig and, and I could tell within a few hours that was going to be sagging. You know when you put it in, you can see how long it's taking to sink. Yeah, it's going down so quickly, you think it ain't going to last But it's quite good night. that it's now sagging because it means that it's taken a lot of goo in. Yeah. The, the pop-ups that don't change in buoyancy, and they're the ones in, that they? haven't taken any liquid in, so there was no point in using them in the first place. So is that, if they're sagging, it's good. Put some cork in them and you've got yeah. a lot of liquid in them. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And I did that and probably will be able to show you the footage right now. A double take on Chodrigs on a lake where they're not supposed to work. Apparently pop-ups don't work on Gigantica. Um, we, we threw the rule book out the window and I do believe a big part of that was the fact that those attractors were on there. <coughs> Um, and it made a difference and just literally little cork plug with our drill kit job done mm -hmm. uh, also the, the color of the pop-up does make a difference if you're if say you're using almond pink and you'll put that on a red pop-up it's not going to turn that into a really light bright pink pop-up yeah if you put the almond pink on a white pop-up like the milky get, toffee like yeah. the milky toffee or like a cell on in the pink and whites you'll you'll get a lighter colored pink and that does make a difference quite a lot of the time so I'll quite often have different colour pop-ups, like original colour pop-ups in the same pot with yeah. the same liquid on, and sometimes a different shade of that colour will work better than the other. I do the same thing, I use the pink and whites like you said, for that exact reason, because you can just put one flavour of goo on or a mix of flavours of goo, but get two colours with, you know, emitting the same flavour. Yeah. And it can, like you say, it can make a difference. It does make a difference. I'd say watching you two guys fish, your, I would say one of your favourite all-time classics is the Pineapple Supreme goo, isn't it? That Pro seems yeah. to be, you both use that a lot. Mm. So I've got, I've got it on 80% of the time. It's yeah, just it's like my go-to. If, if I go to a lake, I just know I'm going to catch on. It's very, very rare that something can outfishes that pineapple for me. Whilst I agree, and pineapple is still my go-to, I still don't put it on all rods at the start of the session. No. If I'm, even if it's a lake that I really know and pineapple's always scored well and I'm fishing three rods, I'd probably put two on it. Yeah. I'd always have maybe a white option, a pink option, yeah. just mm. to see. Colour's really important sometimes, yeah. Yeah. but we learned that on the underwater, didn't we? The, yeah. the pink was really important, but then obviously the flavour was really Adding important taste after that. To yeah. 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 But um, yeah, sometimes certain lakes, they love white pop-ups or yeah. they love pink pop-ups or yellow pop-ups. Um, so you've got to keep an open mind when it comes to that. Definitely. All right, nice one, Adam Smith. Hi guys, I've already got all the goos in the range and they are brilliant, but what makes these goos stand out from the rest of them? So he's talking about the new ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you do you want to comment on the almonds? Yeah, well, the, I'll talk the, about the orange. I was going to say, the first thing I'd say with the almond, it's been since, I suppose it was unleashed on the world on the underwater footage, when yeah. it clearly made such a massive difference to the filming, to the whole fishing session. One of my bugbears with it is it turns everything pink. It might be different shades of pink, but mm. ultimately that's what it did. Mm. So the fact that we've now got what's considered one of the ultimate that you can drizzle onto any colour pop-up, and it might tone it down slightly, might make it slightly more pastel in colour being a white. Um, I think it's, it's, it's made me happier to have that option with that flavour, which hasn't been available in the past. Um, 
So it's, yeah, I think it's a, it's been a necessary add to the range. We've been asked for it so much. I guess one thing I've been asked about a lot mm. on social media: what about a white almond? And I don't know if you've noticed, it, it, the, the white dye doesn't always soak in brilliantly. You'll end up with a little dust on the yeah, outside little, of your yeah. bait. Um, but so many UK anglers, particularly in the UK, have become obsessed with the washed out bait theory. Yeah. They believe that um, the washed out flavour is actually what's giving it the edge. But I actually believe strongly that the reason washed out baits work so well is because they're soft. Yeah. Simple as that. Easier to eat. And, and obviously having a, a hook bait that matches that a little bit in colour um, gives you that, but still still stands out. And and the, and the white almond coming out. Um, actually, we, we Monster Carp Series Three it is, isn't it? That we, yeah. we we've just filmed um, in Serbia, Bosnia that we fished. Uh, that I had I was doing a direct test, so I had the Wonderberry and Buttercorn combination that did so well for me at Gigantica, catching the German and stuff like that. So that was a real go-to, and I was using white. And actually, as you know, I wasn't in a great area that trip, but on the on the final, I think, it was it the final night? I had a few, or the final two, but yeah. I had I had two rods, two rods out on one spot, and two rods out on another, and I fished the white almond on one and the buttercorn and wonderberry on okay. the other rod, and I fished the almond on that side with the buttercorn and wonderberry on the other rod, and it was the almond on both of the spots that produced all was the bites, it? and then on recast as well. On on re I say recast, used bait boat on bait boat drifts. <laughs> 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 they went again, so it's really interesting. Yeah, and I kept kept it out all night, and it never they never went. So it just shows, doesn't it? What we always say it's it's finding what's right for that water, yeah, and not not disregarding something mm. because it didn't produce on one rod at one time. It's having the belief and understanding what's right where. And obviously the water was cold on it then. Yeah. We were, you know, it was dropping at night. And the almond, um, certainly in its supreme form, in both colours, is absolutely deadly in the cold. Um, so that that that's where those almonds will will stand out. What do you think of the what do you think of the uh, outrageous orange smoke? The, the orange is the nicest one to taste. Like everyone's been like, just <laughs> squeezing in their mouth in here. But if you taste that, you'll realise that it's going to catch anything. You know, not just fish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the yeah, the orange on 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 the angler's nose will really stand out. But the the thing about that particular product is to understand. And I've actually we, we've sort of grouped them up here. You've got you've got the real heavy smokes if you like uh, which used to be the called the power smokes you see some called power some are called smokes um but the orange really is i mean it's changed they're they're trying some pastel colors um to give you sort of a creamier tone in the cloud but that one i would say when the water temperature goes above 16 degrees so they're getting close to spawning when you get into that that weather temperature yeah that is when it's going to be deadly and um right up to the warmest temperatures that we get in the UK. Um, Simon Scott said to me, uh, a carp's optimum feeding temperature is sort of 28 degrees. That is when they're at their most ravenous. Um, so anything from 16 to 28 degrees, if you're willing to test the water or just know you're out in the sunshine, that's where that little family there are absolutely brilliant. Okay, um, inside of that, that's where the ones that you you love a lot, the Supreme. Yeah, so I, I just tend to use higher tracked hook baits more in the spring, so then that's where I yeah. find out what ones work for me generally. So um, yeah, the the ones that re when you put in your mouth, you're like, Jesus, that's sweet. Yeah, they're the ones that I feel work in in the um, in the spring and the in the winter. And then, the, like you said, the ones in the middle here are sort of just smooth. You, I think for years and years we we've smelled pop ups and not really tasted the liquid. A lot of the old ones I used to use, like you know didn't work very well. If you put them in the mouth, it really tastes horrible. Bitter. Yeah, and, and the fish have got to taste it. No, they're not smelling it, they're tasting it. So yeah. whatever tastes nice to you is going to work well for fish. And often these are the ones that really taste nice and they're the ones that work in the summer when everything's working, you know, smoothly. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the thing to remember, what, what, the, what the water temperature is doing for these is actually making them more soluble. So when, when, things, are, when things are warmer, yeah, things are more soluble. You know, if you if you try to mix granules of coffee with cold water, doesn't it's a good, happen. Doesn't happen. Do it with warm water, you get a great response. So you think about if you think about it that way. You know, if you but these these Supremes and um, what Tom's saying as well is very true in the way that um, a lot of Rod Hutchinson's old books. You know, if you read about his winter fishing, 
he was big into flavours and some of my best ever pop-ups back in the day, before these came along, were always using old Hutchie's old flavours mixed with some of the mainline newer ones or I'd give them to mainline and try to get something created. And it was always the ones that Rod Hutchinson used to describe as electrocute in your tongue. Like you fizz almost that. Yeah, you'd get, yeah, tingle. the Nouvelle fit. You'd yeah. get like, um, you would, you get that tingle. And, and, and I suppose one of the ones that doesn't taste great out there, I mean, uh, I can't remember what list we put it in. It's probably, um, is that Mystic Spice? Yep. Yeah. Um, great one in the winter. Yeah. Tastes, tastes like medicine, you yeah, know? Yeah, that clove. Um, Very hot. And, and in South Africa, where these were developed, those those almost bizarre smelling mm. tasting ones are the most popular yeah but believe it or not in england and europe the most popular in sales are almost the ones that smell and taste nice like tom said mm. because the angler it's the it's the combination between the fish loving them and the anglers loving yeah, them yeah definitely um but the mystic spice uh, is one of danny's favorites Daryl's been using it a lot yeah, in the yes. winter this yeah. year so far at Blasford. You've got yeah. to remember though, these ones like the Mystic Spice that are making you do that when you put them in your mouth. Yeah. They're, they they work really, they seem to work really well at a time of year when the fish's senses are really down as well. So yeah. they're, you know, what, what they're, so you get they're, one of them, they're, they're, you? they're tasting, jab. they're tasting at 10%. So if you, if you tasted that at 10%, if you put that in a, in a, in a glass of hundred miller water and only put 10, 10 million there, it wouldn't be as strong but you'd still just be able to taste it, which is what's happening in the winter. Whereas if you use that in the summer, I think it would be too strong for them, but maybe, Fair point. You know, maybe it wouldn't be. No, 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 I think, I, that, that's a really, really valid point. And that's that whole ele electrocution style emotion that some yeah. of these give to the fish underwater, you know, you're getting that reaction. If you're using goo on a water where it's never been used at all, how would you approach it and how often would you use it over a three day session? Yeah, yeah it's thinking about it too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. stop <laughs> thinking about it. You're, you're, they're, they're a carp in a lake and they like the taste of them. That is it, forget about it. Mate, That's I, I, I can't, I can't really say any more. No... There's no, just because a carp has not seen the goo before does not mean they're not gonna eat. They might not have seen sweet corn before, but you wouldn't think twice about putting a pile of sweet corn over no. one of your rods. I would, I would approach it exactly the same as I approach lakes where I've used it all the time. I'd have probably three different colours out, three different flavours, and just start working out from there with regards to the regularity that I'd be using it. Every time I reel in, a fresh hook bait goes on. If I, had a P, if I was using PVA bags, it'd be a fresh bit going on. I use it all the time. You, I, I've never found, and I don't believe you can overdo it. They're not, they're not getting full up on it. It's just something you're using to pull them down to your hook bait and nick that bite. And the best barometer is the fact that now we do the Monster Carp series. Mm. Um, we did think and tackle for plenty of years after it came out in sort of 2012. But then we travel the world and all three of us use it religiously. Yep. And have we ever gone somewhere and gone, oh, these carp aren't going to take that. They've not seen it before. Well, actually in Hungary, we, had, we took it off because we were getting too many bites from smaller fish. That is we? true. Yeah. And it wasn't because they were small, it's just because they were fish. Yeah. And they were and too attractive yeah, to it. Yeah, that's we right. Were like, genuinely, let's, we need to take it off and make it less attractive so it, st it stays in the lake long enough for a bigger fish to pick it up. And now and you know that goes against that my grain. That genuinely <laughs> yeah. I've got to slow my bites down, that doesn't go with you. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, it, that's what we had to do. Well, well some of our uh, German team members and stuff, they, they say to me, Ali, we cannot, uh, sorry <laughs> for the accent, we, cannot, <laughs> we often cannot use it because before we get back to shore with the rod, the rod is gone. And it would just be anything. It could be a little carp, it could be a bream, but they're genuinely sometimes, that is the only time I find them a negative, is like they're too attractive. And Balaton was a great example yeah, where and we... They're, and they're fish that haven't been fished for. So to yeah. answer Matey's question, it's like, well, they, they just like the taste of it. It's yeah. Like, yeah. They're like, oh, I've been fished for before, now I'll eat goo. Yeah. It doesn't work, you yeah. Know. What makes goo better than other alternatives on the market? What other alternatives? Exactly. <laughs> that, yeah. That's the problem. The very first thing that happened when, when Kiana launched Goo, we started distributing it. A lot of people jumped on the uh, the green ones and were talking about uh, the, the the sort of dye that was in it and trying to claim that it was dangerous to fish. Um, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, came loads of other products that didn't have the intellectual property behind these and didn't catch fish like these did. Um, so these are extremely safe, a lot of natural products, and there is, n there is nothing out there like, like this, um, apart from in South Africa, of course, where they came from. A lot of the comments are that, 
why is it so expensive? But you guys don't, you, sorry, you guys and girls don't know what is actually in here and the, and the formulation and the machinery that has to be done to mix these up so well, the ingredients, where they're coming from, the quality of flavors. Ingredients for this come from all around the world, okay? And then you have the mouths to feed, you've got quarter distributing it, it then goes to a tackle shop as yep. Neil you know, deals with it. So that does bump up the price, but this is the big but. A lot of people will uh, spend, I don't know, 20, 30 quid on bait for a session? Yeah, wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah. How long would one of them bottles last you? It lasts me an awfully long time. Yeah. It, it may, a little bit less now because I've actually started putting them in my spot mix, which you, you do use a little bit more. But yeah, you you're still not talking loads and loads. Yeah. You, yeah. So if you you're curing months, hook baits, yeah, months, I was just going to yeah. exactly what yeah. I was going to say. If you're curing hook baits and getting them all ready, you might get through a, a quick bit early on. Mm. But that bottle goes back in me, in me sort of container yeah. at home, if you like, and I start again when I want to do some more. Yeah. It lasts for ages. So they're going 12 quid, it's 12 quid, and they're seeing like, you know, this bottle of liquid, but they don't realise that 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 12 quid would, would do multiple bottles of cured hook baits, you know? I mean, if you used half a bottle over time, drizzling it on a tub of uh, pop-ups or whatever, and you kept doing it, kept doing it, kept drizzling it on, I mean, I'd be surprised if you even got a quarter of a way down, would you? No. I don't use a quarter of a bottle on a tub of pop-ups. No. no. And no. like, you know, one tub of pop-ups, how many casts is that when you yeah. look at it? Exactly. Yes. So, so the, pr the price debate, I think the only time it becomes expensive if you w is when Tom just said you, you're, you're, putting it, you're putting it on your loose feed. And I've grouped up down here uh, the ones that I've used a lot on my loose feed. Um, the tiger yep. nut, the corn, the raspberry we've spoken about the fly, uh, with the floaters is really, really popular. Uh, You're that, watering it down. Yeah, You're, that's right. Uh, yeah, you may, I'm, I'm putting a little squeeze in into the bottom of a bait bucket um, and turning it into a milkshake. So I've used five mil, 10 mil, <laughs> you know? It's, that's a lot of sessions with that. Yeah. If you've gone and bought a sack of mixers uh, from like a tackle shop, you know, yeah. floating pellets, you're using a lot more of them than yeah. you are, but you're making them a lot more attractive. So. It's worth understanding how far a bottle goes for your for your you know your bang for your buck. Yeah, it's Good. all about value, isn't it? The whole thing's about value as well, and you're getting a lot of value for your money because I genuinely believe it really makes your bait better. And if you if you believe that as well, then you don't think about the money. When do you use the goo in your loose feed, and what hook baits would you use over the top as a result? Good when? question. That it deserves double, double lot double of freebie. points. When do yeah. I use it in my loose feed? Um, you might not. I do. The I, I don't. I don't tend to use it if I'm what I'd call boily fishing, putting nothing else out, fishing for a bite at a time. Especially in the spring, I tend to put a handful of bait out. My pop up over the top will be the thing that is there to get me the quick bite. I want the if you like the bait to pull them in. I want my hook bait to be the first thing they pick up. So that will be the thing that's gooed up, ready to go. The only time I really use in my loose feed is if I'm spotting. If I'm spotting on a regular basis, say ringing the dinner bell as we like to say, um, I probably put it in every fourth or fifth spot. One in a handful, if you like, is real good up, super attractive. And then I'll I'll start the session with three different good hook baits over the top. Rarely the same flavour as what I'm putting into the mix. So I like to, Tiger Nut's actually one of my favourites for spotting out over the top. Um, and then I have sort of three go-to hook baits that I would use good, always be a pineapple, probably a butter corn, and then a squid. They're sort of my opening gambits a lot of the time, and then tweak from there on in. Lovely. Thomas? Yeah, mine's very similar. I thing is, I've been outfished next door by one of my mates, and he used um, pineapple supreme in his spot mix. And I was like, mate, is that not like, is it not a bit too much like for your spot mix? He's like, we, we were using it in the world champs and that's what was working. And he was using pineapple pop-ups over the top and he caught more than me on a lake that I fish all the time and should have beat him on, you know? So um, since then I've actually done that quite a lot, very early spring or back end of the winter. If I'm on a lake where there are lots of carp in there, you're getting a lot of fish feeding and you want a feeding reaction. So um, I'm happy to use pineapple in the spot mix and pineapple as my hook face. I love pineapple! How long ago yeah. did that happen? Because it sounds like so, it still hurts. I, uh, it's really bad about <laughs> four years ago. Five you don't like getting ago. beat, do you? I don't like getting beat, no. Um, wh what I've tried to explain to people when I've spoken to them is, is, a, is a tiered system. So 
Tom, Tom's not contradicting that. He's sort of, they sound like on a bit of a level. But for example, the Tiger Nut has become a real favorite of mine. Same as the corn was, um, to put gl a glaze, yeah? Like olive oil on your salad, I've always described it nice. as, yeah? yeah. Um, on your loose feed. And I will put that into my buffet theory or whatever, if you like. Whatever's in that bucket, I'll put it on. I always say, proof's in the pudding, isn't it? rest mm. of history yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think the difference between what you're saying and what i'm saying though is is the time of year and it really does make a difference for bait like bait is the most important thing in, in fishing not just in carp fishing but in, in everything yeah as a whole so you're what, what i'm saying is is that the pineapple is really inducing a feeding response in december or yeah. jan or feb or wherever and yours was in the summer yeah i think in in jan or feb i wouldn't get that feeding response if i put something out that was uh, was weaker than, than say the pineapple. No, and so you're creating so that big I'm cloud. Creating something that wouldn't be yeah. you would, you couldn't create with, with with something that's less. Yeah, if that makes sense. It's always match anglers that use these carp match anglers, yes. and they're because they're the people that can actually tell if they're using something that makes a difference. Yeah, people that are fishing for free fish a year don't try something like this because no. they think it's not going to work, but really they'd catch six. Yeah. But because it's over such a long period of time, they can't really tell if this is the thing that's made a difference. Whereas when you're a match angler or you're sitting next to somebody yep. who's catching more than you, you're like, well, the only thing he's doing different is, is that. Yeah. And, and they learn quickly, which is why they'll use it. Which is where it came from. Yeah. yeah that cool, England yeah. got smashed by South Africa yeah. in the World Championships in South Africa. Um, and Ian, um, who is now the owner of Kiana Carp, was watching this green flash on the surface. Um, came back and messed about with these things that people think, well, it's just gel. I just, we saw a question, you know who it is. Is it just gelatine and fluorescein, you know? And people came back and tried all of these little uh, basic combinations that European marketers had and they, nothing happened. They, they it still didn't compete yeah. with these South African products. And these guys were- Well, they wanted four years on the spin, didn't they? Yeah, but and they- beat us at home. Yeah, they beat us at home. On a, on a method, the zig, they'd never used before. Yep. Um, and England were miles ahead and caught them up. And the same in Italy. England were winning on zigs and the South Africans marched back. And that was the, the raspberry the difference was they had that in their armory, yeah. you know. Um, but the, 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 the point with it is that it, what it's doing is you can have loads of food on the bottom. And that's what the South Africans did to England. They had loads of food out. They were, I believe they used something like a tonne of crumble pellet or something which you know, if you just put out a load of dust on the bottom and fish a hook bait, I mean, I learned a layer as a kid, barely got, you know, if I fish a 20 miller boilie over a load of hemp, barely no bites. Bite. But these guys were just chucking out hook baits and getting bites out of their hand. And obviously the English couldn't work out how that was yeah. proper. It didn't work, didn't make sense to us. But obviously just adding that to the orbit of their bag was the difference. Why is goo banned at fisheries and are you trying to do something about it? A question from someone dying to try it. And then uh, Keith has put, why is it more carp lakes are banning the use of goo? Is it because it's made up of harmful to fish chemicals? Firstly, I don't think more are banning it. I just think it's going the other way. Um, I remember when it first came out, which was five or six years ago now. Yeah, 2012. Yeah. yeah people really thought that this little bottle of green attractor yeah. was going to turn their lakes green. Yeah. That was a genuine concern. Madness. Madness. Crazy. We actually, I can't remember the exact statistic. I've got them in my head. I know what you're going to say. about it, the about, it a million bottles? Yeah, so I'll tell you now. Yeah. Right? Um, the big debate was around fluorescein, which um, if you look at the, some of the green, um, which there's not that many there's left no, in the range, actually, um, that, that was the dye a lot of people pinpointed at goo. That was what was famous from South Africa as well, the fluorescein. That's what they took out of it, thinking it was fluorescein and a bit of flavour. That's it. You couldn't be any further from the truth, right? Now, we did our due diligence into fluorescein as well. So um, we did a lot of research. Um, Adam Huntington, who is actually uh, a, like, I think he's a biochemistry student, first class honours, all that sort of stuff. He, he actually got proper documentation about fluorescein. It was proven that with the amount of dye, not saying fluorescein, that's in the green ones, mm -hmm. you would need to, to harm Daphnia, which they, right. they regard as the uh, most susceptible water life, right? Um, 
on a lake that was, I believe, 100 metres by 100 metres and 10 metres deep, right? So pretty deep. Yeah. Uh, not that big. 57 million bottles used simultaneously yeah. at the, yeah, on that lake to, heart, no, to harm Daphnia, right? Then they went the other end of the spectrum, which was catfish, which they saw as the hardiest uh, aquatic life in a, in, in a fishery, right? Um, and the number for that was 157 million bottles used simultaneously to harm catfish, right? And that was on the little quantities of uh, dye that are in there. So basically, absolutely physically impossible to ever happen that you could ever harm any water life with this product, um, right down to bioorganisms on the lake bed. And I've had the debate with Stuart Gillam at Gillam's. Yep. He lets me use it. He lets us go out there and use it, but it's actually a lack of product knowledge um, because the fishery owner doesn't want their fish harm. No, they're doing it because they believe they're protecting their fish. Yeah, they're not so doing that, it that's it's, fine. Yeah. And I respect that. I respect that these people are worried, but trust me, there's a gazillion other products out there um, that are far more... A detriment to your fish that you've been letting people use for a long time. Yes, yeah, so some of the shelf life boilies um, that that don't break down, um, that are rock hard. There's loads out there that are doing a lot more harm than anything could ever do. And I actually had the chat with Stuart. He was like, I was like, mate, that that goes on a little hook boat, sits on the bottom. Even the tiniest uh, water um, organisms that are down there won't be harmed by it. Um, and the only thing is. It's, you know, it's attracting fish and helping anglers catch more fish, which means they're going to return to your water more because they've had more enjoyment from their fishing. And that's the... <laughs> it's I just think it's mad as well that people think that we'd actually sell something that, harm, that harms fish. Yeah. You know, we're a company that's been, been about for a long period of time. We push fish safety all of the time. Yeah. Um, but we're going to forget all that. Yeah, we're going to forget yeah. all that and just kill the fish. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, come on, like, we've, we've yeah. done our homework. Yeah. A lot that's, of those... That's not going to happen. And it, I can imagine if you used a lot less bottles of salt, which is also a tractor and every, you know, yeah. everybody uses in everything, you would kill a lot of the lake's population far quicker than you would do if you used this. So even that, it seems ridiculous, but, you know, that's not... And that's not banned. No, no one bans salt. No, no. Ban salt is like loads more harmful to your lake bed and damaging uh, to the bottom. But it's and in the... everything. It's in everything. Yeah, but no <laughs> one brought up salt because everyone knows salt. Yes, yeah, right. So, salt's all right. I yeah. eat it all the time. But people put spotting buckets of it. I think they did it on Sanders years ago. Um, Joe yeah. Morgan told me about spotting it. Spotting out salt. Yeah, and it really started to damage the the lake bed. So. Um, you know, just use your common sense. It's not, there's nothing in moderation. Everything in moderation, Don't exactly. Don't go and put a million bottles in your lake. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I hope more waters do use a bit of common sense. A few clubs, just educate yourselves. Call us, talk to us. We'll explain it to you and help you out. Um, and let your anglers uh, and your members enjoy their fishing more because that's all these products will help them do. And get dirty your hands. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> that is the only noise. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly, in one of Corder Masterclass, Danny Fairbrass admits that his hook bait that was soaked in a goo was too potent and led to a lack of bites. He changed to a non-soaked bait and had bites. I've been using my personal favourite Bumbleberry Supreme, which is white on peaches and cream white boilies, and that does the trick for me. Uh, it, he must mean Wonderberry, because Bumbleberry's pink, right? Um, yep. Once soaked for some time, they simply don't lose their smell no matter how long in the water. I tried the same baits but soaked in the Almond Supreme, which is, is extremely potent and turns them bright pink and on the la same lake and same tactics, just didn't produce. It's all trial and error and they're all good enhancers, but my advice is find a good balance between bait and goo that you're confident with. Tom, you spoke off camera and we, had, we, we have quite a good interesting debate on this. You yes. do believe there is a time and a place not to use it. Um, I think there's, I think all of the time is the time and a place to keep your options open. I, okay. think, that's, I think that's the best way of Fair point. It. As you were yeah. reading, I was thinking maybe that's the best way of saying it. I think possibly at the back end of the summer when fish have been eating, you know, some of the lake star fish are just completely dominated by cell. They're going around all day long picking up cell bottom baits. You're putting a kilo out and fishing over the top of it. By the time um, back end of August has come round, they've seen lots of yellow pop-ups and pink pop-ups about, they've been caught on them, but they've just been eating cell all summer and it's been fine. In that instance, cell, a cell bottom bait would probably work better over a really high tract. 
Um, and it would be silly not to still try a just to sell bottom bait in them occasions in the summer because it could often work better, I think. Um, but having said that, most of the time, especially all of the time in the spring, the winter, um, early summer, early, possibly most early, of autumn. No, no, I <laughs> think no, 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 no. summer and autumn. I think you should leave your options open as far as bait is concerned. Yeah, and that's not just from goo to non goo boilies, from cell to activate. I'm talking about from you know boilies to, to yeah. sweet corn to tiger nuts to maggots to casters to yeah. worms. Whatever. Leave your options open because well, there is always something that's going to work better. You said at the start the the most important thing you can put out is your bait. Yeah, that yeah. is the one thing it that is. It's, it's, it's the sing, after location. It is the single. Yeah. Um, biggest thing that make the single 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 thing that makes the biggest difference. Definitely, yes. definitely, 100%. yeah. And 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 when you when you say it like that, you're you're right. And I I think um I, I actually remember situations when Dan's um taken a good one off. Um, but he's actually often he's he's caught on two rods. Like I remember in Italy, he was catching on two rods nearest the fish. Yeah. And his third rod, which was the furthest away from the fish. Yeah. He had the goo on. And uh, because he was catching on ungooed ones, he took he took the goo off that one. And I think what happened was he ended up with two rods wound in, and that went eventually. Uh, but that 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 wasn't enough to make a conclusion, you know. What what I what I do agree with Tom is that um, you do get waters, but most customers, most users, can't relate to that type of fishing. They're not often going to lakes where. Um, there's an estab maybe there's been an established bait and they're going to go and do a four five six day session. Yeah, that's what you're that, again, Dan has told me about his times um, in South Africa yeah, on uh, what's, what's the lake called mind. again? Don uh, uh, Donaldson, Donaldson, Dam. Donaldson Dam. Yeah. So Dan has started well, started catching on goo, I believe, at the Mystic beginning. Spice. Yeah, Mystic Spice, beginning of the week, catching loads, right? And his bites are petered off, and I. I and I can understand at that point they've got so hard onto his mainline food source. Yeah, because source, he's feeding that as well. Isn't feeding he? that that, yeah. that now they want nothing but that, and that is a situation where I can totally understand yep. that Dan has changed to that because they've totally tuned into that food source. Majority of people, if you asked them how many week-long sessions do you do in a year on on a random holiday venue, yes. they're going to say very few, and that's where I always give the mathematical argument, and that is 500 things on the bottom, right? If your one is the same as that 500 and they don't eat every one of them, you really have only got a one in 500 chance, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, this is hard. Once you start talking about <laughs> No, 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 no because I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, if, if you, okay, lose the colour, you've got the most attractive food. And I've, mate, I've, sit, I've sat there on underwater films that never saw the light of day. Um, I'll go back to the Wellington Country Park ones. If mm -hmm. Dan, if the guys in that bivvy during underwater five and six had goo back then or even used high tract yeah. they would have caught loads more carp and i remember they were sitting there and they were thinking oh this carp's um this carp's sitting on the rig because it's camouflaged and all that sort of stuff and uh, you know it knows that's the rig it won't even chewing his food and and there was no the problem was it was all fusion or all particle and pellet and just the hook bait at the time they thought them bloodworm dumbbells were amazing and now when i i've watched them back a lot to study and look and i'm like they weren't they weren't amazing they were just getting picked up eventually they were just part they of weren't the amazing it's spring though wasn't it that was spring yeah mm. but they weren't amazing like but they were eating all the the loose feed yeah. as well they weren't amazing like the almond was on underwater eight where they were coming from four foot down and dive into the lake bed to hit that hook bait and don't forget, we saw, uh, we watched pink bait without goo. I watched it for long periods before Tom used it and after Tom used yeah. it. And I was fidgeting in my seat, like, damn, please just put the <laughs> almond back on, mate. There was one day, there was so many, f well, it's the day he caught, to be fair to him, it's the day he caught the big common, right? Um, but that, he, uh, Elliot, he, Elliot came, I think, did he, they use the hinge stiffer, didn't they? Yeah, yeah and well, Elliot's version. Yeah, Elliot's, Elliot's three, yeah. right. So they used, yeah, the, his version of it. They used that. Mate, the amount of fish that just went over that, and that was just, I think, Dan's fruity squid pop-up or whatever it was, just not touching it, not touching it, not touching it, and eventually a big fish with obviously uh, a wider head yeah. that got, could get closer to the bait to take it, but all the doubles and 20s that were coming past. So in Elliot's defence... It was a big fish rig, yeah and, yeah, and he did. But afterwards, put the goo on, literally, as soon as it went, fish were taking it, spitting it out, headbutting it. it. 
just totally different. Like it went from one pickup in hours to like 20 chances in, in, in minutes, minutes. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And, and that's where I just think you can make an argument and say, oh, well, they're, oh, they're not really having it or they're... That's spring again, though. That was spring. Yeah. It makes a big difference to me. It really, no, 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 really but it was pink and pink. Yeah, no, but yeah, I'm, I'm saying the goo makes a massive difference. It's yeah, 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 I'm yeah. saying that the question was um, yeah. about, about good and non good baits. Yeah. And will non good baits ever catch more than a, than a good bait? Yeah, I'll talk and, to you about that. In that situation, no. Yeah. Like, you're, you're not putting on a non good bait that will yeah, catch yeah, more yeah. in the spring. I just don't reckon. No. Which what, is, you're, you're seeing a massive difference. What, in, what, what about Gigantica then for Monster Cart, where before uh, everyone was saying, you know, because it. They were saying you want to match the hatch. You want to match the hatch, Al. You know you want to use the you want to use it on the hook. Everyone was saying it to me a lot, weren't they? Before before we went out there, and I, I, because I don't believe in it at all. I don't mm. the ma I can't get my head around the mathematics of it, and I'll always fish a higher track because I have done almost for as long as I can remember. All my significant fish growing, all my PBs, biggest fish have always come on the, have come on the higher track, even if it was a snowman, you know. And again. I went there, decided, no, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just going to fish our fish and, you know. Yeah, do, my, do what yeah, I want. And yeah, the, and then both of my biggest fish ever from Gigantica have come. And I have fi even, you know, I have fished uh, a hook, uh, a match the hatch. That was about to be my question. Have you, yeah, know. I did. I mean, when the, the, the night I caught a uh, single scale, yeah. um, I had, uh, I'd, I changed the spot. It's 2010. I changed the spot. I'd gone further out to match what Daryl was doing, so I was fishing closer in. I had a few, uh, four bites, lost them, um, and I had two nights left. And I told my, well, I had one night left actually, but I told my mum I'm going to stay. And she said, "Yeah, you can't blank on the DVD." <laughs> so, I stayed, <laughs> so I stayed there. And uh, good old mum. Yeah, so I went 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 to the range where Daryl was fishing. So I went further out, put put New Grange and Sell out, I think at the time. Yeah. Um, a few and some tiger nuts, and I put. Uh, there was no goo around at that time, and I, I put a mainline Scopex and Peach Orange giant bait, 30 miller, I think it was, saint crazy, and a and a set and a cell bottom bait on the other rod. Yeah, uh, and it was the uh, track high yeah, track, high one track that, that went. went. Yeah, yeah. I can think of both situations where I've caught mm. I've caught more on the good ones most of the time, but then I've, got, I've also can remember times when they just wouldn't go near a yellow hook back. They wouldn't go near something bright or something that was over the top. And then times I caught more and just, I used, well, I used to use um, cell drilled out with a bit of corking all the time on a muzzer. muzzer. And w when I was fishing a lot at that time, I knew that well, the goo wasn't about, I'm talking about higher tracks yeah. now, um, that if you put anything yellow or pink on in the summer, you just wasn't going to catch as much as me. That's just the way. Yeah, you're like, reducing your chances yeah, straight away. I was mm. right next to each other. And I was there days and days and days on end. So I was getting loads of information back. And all of the time I was catching more on just a normal out-the-bag cell. So if you could make that out-the-bag cell look identical, but with goo in it. Yeah. Which is what I have done in, 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 over the last few years. I've used the chocolate candy. I've used the, I used to use the caramel. Yeah. Um, and I've caught well on that. But because is it because the colour is now matching the loose? Is that yeah, that that's the reason for the whites? You yeah, know. Because, absolutely. Yes. Poss possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. And that that that's my you know I think often once they are tuned into a food source, um, certainly when you're talking about boilies on a long session and they're banging to the cell. Uh, you know, banging to, to to whatever it is, yeah, they, yeah. they're hitting the bottom. Well, if you can just make that hook bait the same colour or look identical, but it's got that buried in it, then for me, it's a it's a win. It's a Tiger tip. nuts are one of the perfect things for that for me. I, I I like using nuts at certain times of the year, but my my two tiger nuts on my hair will always be covered in pineapple supreme. They look exactly the same, but I still feel I'm getting a quicker bite for that reason. Are they soaked right soaked through? right through to the core, mate? Do you use goo on everything you cast out? When I started using it, I wasn't entirely convinced. I started fishing two rods, six feet apart, one rod with goo, one without. The rods, the goo rods outperformed the other over a four month period. So I started using goo on every rod and it was awesome. I started fishing another venue, so I went back on one rod on goo, one without, and since then I haven't caught anything on the, go on the goo rod, but I'm catching with a non goo bait. It's messing my head up. <laughs> right. To try different goos, like he's keeping his options open yeah. with goo and not goo, try the different ones because there's a big, there's a just as big difference, if not a bigger difference, within this range than there is between this and not 
not having it on, you know. So, yeah. Um, tr try some different ones, mate. We've, we're, we've probably all had options, but I remember going to a lake uh, full of carp um, in, in Tip Tree, Brook Hall. Yeah. Known it really well. It was where I caught my first carp from. So, went down with my kids, fishing on the whip, and I thought I'd have a carp rod down the edge. And I was just fishing little bags with, I think it was Perfect Peach. Kept plopping it down, could not get it's a not bite. It's not there anymore. It's not, no, it's not. It's just <laughs> one, one of the gold ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah but great. started to have a play, put halibut haze on, put it back in the same spot, had a bite straight away. First of all, thought, well, you know, carp are coming in, it's, it's going to happen. Had three quick fish on that method, went back to peach, couldn't get a bite. And yeah. if you'd have just stuck to one go, you'd say, hey, this is rubbish, this yes. stuff, it don't work. Yeah. You have got to have a little play, yeah. as Tom said, keep your options open. And, that, and that's why I don't think it'll ever be used like the South Africans have used it, with almost like a, a giant pod, a cupboard between their rods. Yeah. I can't imagine the English and European anglers ever go into that level of experimenting because a lot of their fishing in South Africa is bank fishing, which is our form of match fishing, if you like. Yeah. They've, they've often even got two hooks and two yeah. feeders on one rod that mm. they cast out. So uh, they're really experimenting. Yeah, the funny, the, like, most other fishing is like that. Yeah. It's you just know, like fly, yeah. fly fishing, yeah. sea, sea fishing. Sea fishing, yeah. You've been off the side of a boat, you put a bit of mackerel on or whatever, yeah, yeah. nothing, put a bit of squid on, nothing, yeah. one of them worms on straight away, yeah. you've got one. Yeah, they're and there, that, aren't that they? That is the difference in, yeah. in, in your bait. And people don't. Uh, you know, try don't enough. They don't, they don't and try we've enough been guilty of that. You sit there at time and it's just not happening, where there's other things you can try that would probably nick a bite here, mm. then, yeah. here and there. You know? yeah. But what the, the whole point is, if you don't try them and you don't adjust, and, and Tom, go to uh, underwater, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously you fished after me to start with because you then had to leave, didn't you? Yeah. And the very first, I was using, uh, we did the raspberry plume pellets, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So we had the mainline spot and people put a bit of raspberry plume on and dried them out. And... We discussed. I felt like it got a bit of a reaction, but not not amazing enough for us to go. Wow, we were put in the day we caught the big plated. Yeah. We had the corn. We had all the the particles soaked in the corn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that all got forgotten about because obviously it was all about the boy. But all the particles was in the corn. Yeah. You know? um, then as time progressed, I started fishing. I used the tutti frutti on the orange one, and it didn't really. I had that one bite. Then I lost yeah. at the end of the day. But it wasn't until the almonds was used that we really were like, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's kind of like what this guy is saying. Yeah, leave, yeah. Leave, you've got to leave your options open. We keep, keep, keep saying the same thing, but it's like you've got to keep trying different ones because one of them really does often work better than the others. Definitely. And there isn't actually anything else that I've used that um, you can tell that has... It, like, shows the evidence that, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Whereas on, on that underwater, that almond was like... If you, if you don't believe... if it, you're, you're stupid if you, if you don't understand. <laughs> and what's we going edited on it down because it looked too too one way, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was like it was yeah. a sales promotional pitch, mm. but it was. Um, you had you you had a session. Was it last winter when when you did um, you were fishing on St John's or a cup and a bumbleberry had just come out? Yeah, yeah and I that. and you actually told me the bumbleberry was out fishing everything. It was at the time. Yeah, I was fishing maggots. Yeah, um, I was fishing maggots and crushed boilie and I think some crushed tigers. I think, um, but may, maybe seventy percent maggots in my mix. Um, and as always, put three different hook baits out in the beginning. Bumbleberry was on the middle rod, and if your middle rod goes first, weird, the first it? time it's weird. It's like some something's better with that because they're normally coming in from left or right, so or one of your rigs is sitting badly. So then I put it out again. Middle rod goes again. Bumbleberry. I think that's really strange. So I moved the middle rod over to the right hand rod. Put say the pineapple in the middle out. Right hand rod now goes with the bumbleberry, and you're thinking right, well it's, de it's definitely the bumbleberry. So now I put it on the left hand rod that hasn't done a bite yet. Get another bite, and I ended up with like thirty something fish. Yeah, I think. It's ridiculous. Yeah, All three on bumbleberry. All three on bumbleberry. Yeah, if you work out that quickly. Bumbleberry we, party. Yeah, it was, it was. If, you, if you work out that quickly, what's going on? Yeah. It, 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 yeah, you get a, you have a good session in the end. And and that I think is a lot of the problem with people having a a, a hesitation or a resistance to use a product. Tom is going fishing totally open minded and has so much confidence in the goo that he's willing to make the tweaks on the day to make the changes to get the results. So that leads on nicely to, to one last question from a guy called Ali Hamid. He seems to have got two questions question. into this. <laughs> yeah. He's lucky. Yeah. He's lucky. Um, loads in the range. One you get, we get asked a lot. Neil Spooner, your favourite combination? Wonderberry and Bumbleberry. Okay. Two real fruity ones, but I, I like. I, and that sounds so like the colour it creates and the smells just magical, and it's always done me, always done me proud. Right, very good. Very, very nice. 
Classic. Very, very uh, Mine is, uh, I'm a very simple guy. Yeah. Pineapple and pineapple. <laughs> so pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Supremes. I, t I tend not to use the... Um, smoke. The, the smoke. I use the, that Supreme an awful lot. Yeah. And uh, I just, that's, that's my favourite. So, so what are you saying? Just the Supreme on its own? Supreme. On, on what bait? Well, if someone on, says what bait, you... On, you... An IB, on, on main on IB pop-up. Yeah? Yeah. The ones with the little black things in there, darker yellow, and they go really dark when you put the good on them. Oh, a little bit of seeds, oh, yeah. Oh, I want to go oh, fishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that is, yeah. I'll I mean, we've already... I'll, I'll, I'll really guess. Uh, well, I've got natural affection because of last year, or sorry, yeah, last year and this year's filming of Monster Carp. It's a series three in buttercorn and wonderberry as oh, a combination. That's not what I was going to guess. No, but the one, that, yeah, you know which one. <laughs> the one that... Um, we used in Croatia on Masterclass. That I really, you know, when when rods are going in your hand yeah. and, and and they're big fish as well. Yeah. That's when I'm like, mate, argue all day long you want with me about yeah. goo. When they're going out of my hand and they're off big fish, all this stuff about bigger fish eat the the the, the food thing and they're not really hitting the higher tracks. Rip the rule book, throw it over your head, mate. Mango nana, bumbleberry, absolute winner. And um, on it, was it on an IB? No, they were just on the. They were actually on uh, sell up and off your wafters. Oh, were they? And 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 the reason, you know, we touch we we've touched on it in other parts. It might not be in this particular question section, but um, just the nature of those mainline baits, they absorb it up really well. I know they don't like us putting it on their baits, but we like putting them on the baits, and and they are they cut in nice. You know, if you cut the bait in half, you can see it going right in. Yeah. Um, Almost to the core. Right through to the core. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And those, obviously, the Supremes are the ones we do that. But I, I do like to put some of the thicker smokes, if you can, over the top and dry them on under heat. Yeah. Um, and that's that's it. Just experiment. You know, we, the the groups are there. You got your you got your ones you can use on your on your loose feed and and your hook baits. You've got the smokes, which we've said sixteen degrees of water above. Great. And then you've got your Supremes, which basically work all year round, everywhere, for me. Um, that's it. There you go. Give yourself well a done, round of Tom. applause, lads. Well done, well done, Great questions, people, that came through. Thank you.